Hey everyone, welcome back to Navigating Star Atlas. This is a series that we do on the Star Atlas YouTube channel where we sit down with our developers to get to know them, learn what they're working on, and kind of how they do it. Uh, last week, we sat down with the character art director, Hano, and this week, we're actually going to switch to the vehicle team and talk to the vehicle art director. Uh, today, we have Gary Sanchez. Gary, how you doing, man? Thank you so much for joining the show, dude. Hello, hello, Dominique. Thank you for inviting me there. Feel very happy to be there and to speak more about Star Atlas uh, and the vehicle, especially. So thank you for inviting me there. Yeah, absolutely, man. So uh, let's start with a question that I ask everybody. What is your experience? I'm sure it's extensive. <laughs> uh, yes, my experience. So I'm 44 now. And so I started at, at 20 with different high and down. Uh, in my career, but uh, with a good poly polyvalence in different fields. So I, I have started in graphics. I moved to automotive design. I participate to concept or I wa to video game for sure because I was drawing spaceships in child. I have also worked for architecture project, uh, advertising, uh, military and aeronautics, and uh, and different uh, and films. Uh, so yeah, different. A uh, lot of creative field in general, but mostly acts on sci-fi, yeah, because it's also what I like. Mm -hmm. And specifically, you said you worked on on games. Well, personally, it sounds like you have uh, a crazy amount of experience. But uh, let's let's yes, hone in on the uh, games. So, what kind of what kind of games have you have you worked on? Uh, so, for on the game aspect, I have worked on uh, Star Citizen and some different games of Ubisoft, some different games also of Apple. Uh, and uh, so on Star Citizen, I, I, I was doing the, the Dragonfly and the Xian, Nox, uh, the Xian Santokia, etc. Uh, I participate also to to, uh, to different movie uh, and some Star Trek franchise, for example. Uh, also Blur Studio uh, films, uh, and also I got the chance to work in aeronautics also for real jet fighter like uh, Thales is developing. Uh, uh, in Europe and France, uh, and also different architecture projects uh, in USA, and uh, and and I don't remember all, but yeah, a lot of different uh, various experience in game, industrial design, and films in general. So, yeah. yeah, it's kind of crazy how much experience you have, and the experience is so wide. It's like a wide net. Uh, and it's funny because all of that seems like it would actually really help with being a, a ship uh, art director like you you learn from all these different jobs in real life that actually yeah. translate to creating ships in in star Atlas. so that's actually really cool man that's that's awesome super cool Thanks. um going more specifically into star atlas uh what do you do for star atlas for the people who don't know so on star atlas i'm uh, the art director of the vehicle department so I'm surrounded also uh, with a, a fantastic team, an awesome team of experts. Or most of uh, of the team also, for example, on concept and even in production, uh, have experience on a lot of triple A game and uh, some Star Citizen, which is something also uh, specific also that we refine in Star Atlas because doing a ship at this level uh, is something super complex, and uh, and so it's it's great to have also a uh, lot of people uh, uh, experience in this field. So I'm doing the concept also. I'm doing also the supervision uh, with Sean Davis about uh, all the vehicle department and following that the concept is well translated after in 3D and in engine and uh, respecting also the manu ship manufacturer value, integrating the, the convergence with uh, the game design department uh, with ship. Uh, uh, ship Zorita and and translating also the vision of Danny that Danny has uh, since the start so it's, uh, it's a lot of things and the task management etc so yeah I will not enter in detail but it's a lot of work <laughs> <laughs> I want to actually target one of the things you just said you said you you're in kind of charge of bringing the ship from concept to 3D to in engine and then you have to take into a lot of things into account like uh, the vision and things like that and the ship manufacturer. Uh, since you're responsible for basically bringing these ships to life, can you walk us through what that process is like? And then for the audience at home, we're going to have some images in the background. So just keep a lookout for that. So the approach uh, 
uh, on the different sh on depending the ship manufacturer and the complexity of each manufacturer or ship manufacturer is is a bit different depending the ship but generally we start with a 2d sketch or a 3d blo a quick block out so for example the pier 65 was a quick 3d block out but after for example i designed the the, the pier 66 or the f4 based on the x5 so uh, with 2d sketch process then uh, one 3D concept designer has translated also into 3D uh, concept blockout where we establish the first volume, the first shape, and uh, the coherence with the Pierce uh, section of the volume and art surface, etc. Uh, and then we integrate also the, the gameplay uh, uh, convergence. I will say we make a, an equilibrium between uh, what we call play -vis. It's a uh, it's a balance between the aesthetic and the gameplay uh, system, how you enter in the ship, how you exit, where are play the weapon, etc. So there, and the dimension, the good ergonomy. So there is a lot of things like that. And then after, uh, there is all the 3D production where the ship is even more developed in terms of art surface and everything uh, until the, the Unreal Engine. So uh, with the more high high definition of level we can. So we push uh, as far as we can really on this project and especially in Unreal Engine 5 to, to get the best uh, ever done. Dude, that's awesome, dude. <laughs> I love that. Uh, speaking to your previous experience uh, of building cars, how does building virtual spaceships compare? Is it is it harder? Does the experience with creating cars translate over? Yes. Uh, and even for establishing the, the ship manufacturer uh, brand and identity, yes. But also in the complexity of the vehicle, I will say, alors, the, the surf Surface A, what is called Surface A in automotive design for production is pushed quite far on the, on the, on software. Uh, we are at this level of video game in our days, we are close to that, but there is even more component because making a ship like the X6 with uh, more, even more components than, than a car. We don't enter in all the detail of the motor, but uh, some like the Compact Zero, we have already pushed uh, quite far the detail too. But the X6 uh, is a good example of uh, the, the complexity of a ship and how we can push even a small uh, so far. So yeah, it's, I will say, yeah, I, I use all the automotive design experience to translate to sci-fi uh, to give different uh, ship manufacturer identity and uh, also trying to, to push uh, the level of surface uh, as far as possible and art surface uh, and all the detail with the gameplay, all the component integrated. All, yeah, it's, uh, it's as complex now in our days as doing mostly, a, I will say, a concept car or it's between a concept car and, and, uh, and a production car in terms of complexity and in a shorter time. So yeah, it's a, it's a big challenge for, for such a, a engine. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's a challenge. I'm definitely sure it's a challenge. Uh, so we talked about character customization in the last navigating star Alice episode. Uh, I, I am a big fan of customization myself and I know a lot of people are, can you talk us through maybe ship customization and what that could possibly look like? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, uh, on, on ship customization, the big vision of Danny, I think he, he spoke about it on the previous episode, but one of, of its uh, attachments is to give to the player the most freedom as possible and player to be able to, to craft uh, the, the skin, to, to, to put like a maximum of freedom of customization through components, through uh, the shader and graphics and decals, and through also... Uh, uh, the ship weapon. So there is a lot of uh, aspect where you can uh, configure your ship. And especially also uh, the BIOS was also one of the brand like that uh, created by Danny where it's uh, the, the maximum of customization, but as a global system, yeah, it lo it's it's the maximum of freedom for, um, for the player. Uh, so it's really, uh, really uh, something he is attached to. But in the same time, we have to find the right balance between, uh, for example, for the skin, between a special skin and, uh, and the maximum of customizations that the player will have. So the special skin or ship mastery skin will remain unique. Uh, but while the player will, will have large possibility, even in the shader aspect, to have like special materials, special paint, 
or uh, yeah, or uh, upgraded weapon. So there is a lot of uh, combination and possibility. Uh, maybe not as much as the character have, but yeah, we are developing with uh, and with Sean Davis a lot of system about uh, a maximum of freedom for the player mostly. So yeah, it's it will be a big thing. Yeah, freedom of customization in Star Atlas is going to be absolutely humongous, and I'm glad to hear that ships are going to be pretty similar. Uh, yeah. I I I think it's funny that you you talk about there being special skins and then ha kind of having to make sure that because we have special skins we have to make sure that the players can't create those special skins right like so it's that seems like kind of like a, a balancing act of, of making sure that you can create some special skins but you, you don't want to take away too much from the player in the customization aspect so no I, exactly. I i feel for you guys i feel for you guys for sure that seems like a pretty unique uh i'm not gonna call it a problem but just a unique situation you know so yeah that's pretty cool man uh, yeah but so you're gonna be able to have like things like uh decals uh you'll be able to switch your skin um and it's gonna be similar i'm guessing to the character skins right where you have to kind of go out into the universe you have to mine resources turn those resources yeah. into a color and then you can use that color onto your your ship. Yeah, or the, vehicle, the, right? the, pig, the pigment. So, for example, for special paint, you will have some pigment to 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 search and to 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 grab. Uh, and then after, you will be able to craft the skin or to win in ship mastery uh, through the ship mastery and resell it. Or even with the pills like dream or more opportunity, you can apply to to different ship in the same time or things like that. So there is lot of system created by Danny and also in the way we construct ship uh, we have established also um, uh, a big workflow to to see how we can build the ship to and how it's construct to uh, offer the maximum of customization so for the laser of the interior of the seat uh, for the the welding aspect or the paint the, the weapon so yeah it's a it's a big different uh, uh, way to approach uh, the construction of the ship itself uh, in the system, uh, which was also uh, a big research and development things. But uh, yeah, it will offer uh, the same system for all the ship uh, to to be, I will say, configured with the maximum of freedom. So you've actually said something called ship mastery a few times. Can you maybe talk a little bit about what that is? So the ship mastery uh, skin and level is also when uh, you make, for example, a career of pilot, data runner or booty hunter, uh, you will be able to, to um, I will say, to, to win XP, uh, XP uh, through, uh, through the progress you, you made uh, in the game. And through, through this process, you, you will be able to, to get some skin uh, just because of your skill. Uh, extra and so more you progress as a pilot more you will have some reward of of uh, this kind of ship mastery skins and when you reach 10 uh, you will uh, have a certain amount of xp etc so yeah it's uh, something interesting because it's also what we are trying to figure there it's to make real career like in real life uh, for the player uh, not just uh, an esport tournament but something where you you really develop a career of uh, as a pilot, for example, on the season zero with in the video in a video game itself, and this is what is also the metaverse for to me too. So yeah. So basically, so you level up with you level up with the ship that you that you have, and then through leveling up, you can unlock things like skins, for example. So once you reach level ten, you get like some some cool skin. Basically, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Or even more, but mm -hmm. all of this should remain secret. But yeah, you can unlock skins and and uh, and yeah, there will be some rewards uh, just with the skill you develop as a pilot. Yeah, so. we gotta keep we gotta keep something secret, right, Gary? We have to we can't we can't just talk about everything, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. <For sure. laughs> okay, then we'll move on from that topic uh, to actually a topic that I feel like we just don't talk about enough, which is the. Uh, massive ships in star atlas i would say uh we have the biggest spaceships that i've ever seen that a player can own uh maybe i'm wrong i doubt i'm wrong but we definitely uh have a crazy massive ship class and it's called the titan ship so uh with our largest ship class 
being a Titan ship out at the moment, how hard is it going to be to design such a spaceship like the Pierce T1? Like, for example, like how do you even get started on that? It's almost like its own level, you know? Yes, and it's a uh, and even the Titan, I think, uh, Danny calculated, but in terms of of place and walkable area, it's bigger than some even some past triple A game, I think, because it's it's a bit crazy. But even uh, doing, I will say, from the the large class to uh, the capital, are, it's, it's a big challenge too. Capital, commander, uh, and the commander are already uh, one kilometer, uh, and the Titan are four, five. So yeah, it's a, it's a different approach. It's a, there is still a lot of research and development to approach uh, the efficiency of making such ship on the long term. From I will say the large class to Titan, but Titan remains a bit special. I would say there is uh, research in, in development how to build a ship from large to commander. And then after for Titan, it's a bit specific. It requires also uh, more time because it's uh, it's so big that uh, yeah. it needs time to, to be done and to include all the gameplay. But yeah, we, it's uh, the same process as the other ship. But how we build the interior is also uh, uh, we start by the small. So more we create all the small ship, more we create also all the, the elements of interior extra. And so we will be able after to play with it and generate in Unreal Engine a faster interior for such ship because exterior were quite efficient already, but on interior side, it's a bit more of a challenge because interior is really the, the, more, the most difficult part in the way of there is an interior uh, element to integrate for the gameplay extra. Uh, and it's a different approach on such ship because it, it, it needs the help of the technical uh, director also on those, etc. So it's a, it's also um, advanced in parallel of how we progress in the research and development stuff. But for example, the Pier C9 as a capital ship is already a, was already a big challenge to to accomplish, and uh, we have also the the three P, the large that is all, almost finished, etc. So and even on interior now, but. Um, it's a yeah it's a big thing to to do such ship and even from large so yeah titan is a is a special approach uh even in r d uh, research and development uh, workflow dude if i was working on a titan ship i'd be scared i'm not even gonna lie gary i would yeah. be scared because that thing yeah <laughs> that thing is crazy um it's it's so humongous. I I'm pretty sure the Titan ship is as big as the landmass uh, of the showroom, the whole landmass, not just the showroom building itself. It is absolutely in insanity. Yes, I, I do not. I, I do not. It's uh, it's just it's crazy. How I don't know how you're gonna work on that. I'm gonna be honest. It's gonna be. And there crazy. is also all all the way to how to build the ship. So all the, the people there are super experienced, but yeah. we all still learning about how to use Unreal Engine at the at the max, at its best way and how to build such ship. So it's also the optimization of Nanite and all, and we have uh, all learned a lot because it's quite a new technology and how what it cannot offer and how we progress on, on, on this topic. But yeah, it's a, it's a, it has never been done. Yeah. A lot to learn, man. A lot to research. It's going to be quite a task. Yeah, I uh, I look forward to it. I really do look forward to seeing how that develops in the future. I Going out into deep space, coming from a planet or going to a planet and then seeing a Titan ship or getting ambushed by a Titan ship or something like that, like, that's my dream, man. Like, just getting absolutely wiped out by some huge ship owned by a player that's my dream man uh anyways enough of me nerding out about a titan ship that i love uh anyway let's get into space vehicle <laughs> brands uh so what is, we talked a little bit about uh vehicle manufacturers you know i'm thinking about calico opal um thimble visas we have so many ship manufacturers what does it take to create a space vehicle manufacturer i'm I'm sure it takes a ton of work and I'm sure it's uh, kind of a unique challenge because you don't want them to be too similar to each other. You know, you want them to have their own kind of look, feel, vibe and stuff like that. So can you just talk a little bit about that? Yes. Uh, so we have to differentiate bit, uh, the ship between, I will say, uh, each one to each other, but also in terms of uh, while they are aligned to a ship brand manufacturer identity, aesthetically, 
uh, and in the Archer fast or in the look and feel. Uh, so yeah, it's a big, uh, it, it was a big challenge. Uh, I think uh, on the first um, year we develop, I will say the DNA and the, the main specificity of each brand. What is the level of high tech? Uh, and for example, and what is the, the connotation or the semiotic language, the keywords of each brand, and what are the influence in terms of aesthetic, art surface. So for example, you have a thimble that is uh, more an homage to the retro car, uh, the muscle car, but also uh, all the apparent uh, motors of the old, old road and more with this industrial uh, feeling extra. Uh, mm -hmm. You have uh, Opal, it's a bit more luxury, but still with a big connotation about sound, display screen with LED uh, and uh, music and play, more playful while it's also inspired by Yacht. Uh, you have the Pierce that is, uh, our, for Pierce, I, I have been inspired also by Audi and what Audi develop in terms of section surface while we have keep some roughness to give uh, to give it more military, I will say, on from the X6 to, to the bigger one. The X4 remained uh, quite slick, but yeah, it's a mm -hmm. bit slicker brand. The Busan is more biomimetic with um, this kind of influence of insect, alien with some more curve additive manufacturing. So there is all the process that is uh, set up also in the industry of our days, like additive manufacturing, such as uh, 3D printing uh, metal for Ogrika. Uh, for Busan, it's a bit different. It's a bit more organic additive manufacturing where it looks really, uh, uh, I will say, like bones and things like that. So, mm -hmm. and insects. So, it's really inspired by nature. And you have also uh, Calico, where the wall panels are more inspired by pure aeronautics. And so, you have the Tufa, uh, the Tufa, which is more inspired by uh, uh, also the rock and with this kind of metagenic materials. Uh, that is going through uh, through the ship interior, and you have the Rainbow also, which is probably the most high-tech and next-gen brand uh, manufacturer, ship manufacturer of the game, with this kind of levitation plate, like you have in Ark for defense, uh, Ferrofluid for the Chi, uh, you have the Home that looks super minimalistic and pure, and and, and more uh, in intriguing, I will say, with a specific technology that. Uh, the other uh, brand don't have. So it's each one has, has its charm, I will say, but we have tried really to, to make a DNA of each brand uh, in the way of uh, like automotive brand, but here for spaceship. Uh, so it's, uh, it's really what we really make the difference and how each civilization builds their spaceship. So it's a, it was a reflection about that. And I think we can feel it because when you see the Greek, you can totally identify them directly, mm -hmm. same for a Visus, same for a Pierce. And this is, uh, I think, what, he, what is quite great in this game. Yeah, I, I really love the way Star Atlas has handled the ship manufacturers. All of them just feel really different. Like they have their own kind of character and you can you could see just like an inch, not an inch, maybe like a foot of a ship. And you could tell it's from Ogrika or Opal. You could just tell what you're looking at, you know? And I think that just comes from a lot of the hard work that you've put into and Danny and the rest of the team has put into kind of making these ship manufacturers feel and look and just, you know, just feel it, and look so unique. And I just, I absolutely adore the ship manufacturers that we have right now. I kind of have a, a guilty pleasure question for you. Uh, What's your favorite ship manufacturer? But you got to give me a reason why. You can't just say like Opal or something. I'm a, I'm a bit attached to the peers because those were, were the first one uh, uh, developed in Star Atlas. And, and especially uh, I have developed the X5 and the C9. But it's also because those ship, uh, I love the X5 because there is this kind of uh, sh shape shifting uh, ability where so between the different modes, the X5 can uh, move its arm and change its uh, configuration, uh, geometry, the adjustable geometry of the arms. And uh, so I really love this one uh, for this reason, because uh, <laughs> when you fly, you can totally change the, the shape of your ship while flying extra. So and depending the mode of combat or uh, in over mode or etc. or defense. So, yeah. I love it for this reason. And also because of the slickness of it. It's quite modern brand also. And I love the, I love other, but yeah, <laughs> quite attached to this one. 
<laughs> that's cool, man. Yeah, I think I think my favorite might be it could be Pierce, but I'm leaning more towards Rainbow nowadays. I just really like the uniqueness of them, and I know that they're yeah. kind of uh, ah. the Fotoli technology. Like I, I'm obsessed yeah. with the Fotoli technology. That's why, to be honest, yeah. uh, I just yeah, really yeah, like even it. the arc. <laughs> <laughs> the arc is awesome because the arc has the moving plate, and even the chi. It's it's probably the, one of the most next gen too. So yeah, it's uh it's hard to choose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Anyways, yeah, we're actually getting that. That was my last question, Gary. Uh, so, if there's anything you want to say to kind of cap off uh, this episode of Navigating Starless from your side, to say bye to the audience, if you want to just say anything, yeah, say it. Uh, I'm just say I'm I'm thankful to be there. Uh, we are working hard since the start, and I have I got the chance to to be uh, surrounded by. Uh, uh, for example, the first paint team like Sean Davis, who is also supervising all the Unreal Engine 5 and is really the hero for the spaceship for Unreal Engine 5. The animator doing also exceptional job. The people who have models, the C9, all the concept designers involved are the best, uh, honestly, of the industry because they were experienced from Star Citizen. Uh, there is a lot of experience in this team, the Tani Vision and uh, also a, a great manager. Uh, so yeah, all the ingredients are there for making the best game uh, as possible. And so yeah, uh, I just wanted to express it to the community uh, also. Yeah, shout out to the team, shout out to Danny, <laughs> shout out to Vert Paint, shout out to everyone working on Star Atlas, you guys are killing it. All right, well that's gonna do it for episode three of Navigating Star Atlas with the vehicle art director, Gary. Gary, thank you, guys. thank you so much again for, for joining the episode. Really appreciate it. I'm sure everyone enjoyed the insight into ships, ship manufacturers, even the Titan ship, which I think is super unique. Uh, and I cannot wait to see that <laughs> whenever that happens. Uh, for the audience, like I said, thank you for joining. Put in the comments what you thought of the episode. Put in the comments if you have any questions that weren't answered. And then also let us know who you want to see next for Navigating Starless Episode 4. Anyways, that's it. See you, everybody. Thank you.